I'm Peter Apel. I'm a pediatric orthopedic and hand surgeon at Croydon Clinic in Roanoke, Virginia, and I'm going to discuss today uh, the problem of plastic deformation in pediatric montage fractures. So uh, here's a case of uh, what was thought to be an innocuous elbow injury, uh, but careful inspection of the lateral radiograph demonstrates anterior subluxation of the radial head relative to the capitellum. And the Montasia injury is a uh, injury of necessity where in order for the radial capitella joint to dislocate, there has to be an injury of the ulna. And so without an obvious fracture in this case, that injury has to be plastic deformation. So uh, here's another case. So we're going to go through this case and show how we treated it, where plastic deformation caused the Montasia injury. So this is the elbow of a four-year-old child who had um, a fall off of a trampoline. And the initial x-ray looks innocuous, looks like a simple buccal fracture of the proximal ulna. But careful inspection demonstrates that that radial capitella joint is actually anteriorly uh, subluxed, and that this is a Montasia injury, and that there's deformity in that proximal ulna that's causing the radial capitella joint to be uh, dislocated anteriorly. So this was treated operatively. Here's a series of fluoro shots. Um, here's the lateral, uh, which demonstrates that the radial head, or in this case, the radial neck metaphysis, is pointing anterior to the capitellar ossific nucleus. Here's the arthrogram, which confirms that. And we can see here now a bit better that deformity in the ulna. We can see that bowing in the ulna that is the plastic deformation, which has led to the uh, radial capitella joint being unstable here at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. So here's the AP radiograph that shows this is a straight anterior dislocation. There's no lateral component to it. Um, and as we flex the elbow up, we see that we can actually locate it. Um, but you can see those, those deformities there in the ulna. Um, you know, my hand is obscuring it a little bit, but you can clearly see the deformity in the ulna that's present, which is the driver of this um, radio capitellar instability. So in order to correct that plastic deformity, this needs to be treated with an osteotomy. So in this case, we selected an osteotomy site that was just distal to the PRUJ. Uh, go down, make an incision, um, bicortical osteotomy of the ulna in order to allow some flexion of the distal fragment, and we'll flex it enough to, um, to counter the amount of deformity contained in the diaphysis. And so this will create an S-shaped ulna, although the ulna will be S-shaped, the alignment of the joint with the diaphysis will actually be anatomic. So uh, here it is, um, and you can see that S shape now of the proximal ulna and the ulnar diaphysis. But the important part is that, that the joint is located, and the radial capitella joint is located, as proven here on this arthrogram. Uh, because of the age of this child, we chose to fix it with a pin. In older children, a plate would be more appropriate, but for a younger child, uh, a pin is appropriate. It does need to be bicortical fixation in the distal fragment uh, in order to not have toggling of the uh, distal ulnar diaphysis. Uh, if, if you put intramedullary, there can be toggling, and so it's important to make this a, uh, a cortical pin. Here's the final uh, follow-up healed. You can see that S shape in the proximal ulna. It doesn't matter. It will remodel. And the important part is that the radial capitella joint is located. You can see it's located on both views. And this child went on to have full range of motion. Here he is demonstrating his elbow flexion elbow extension, full supination, full pronation. So the take home point is that plastic deformity can be substantial in pediatric montages and failure to correct the plastic deformity can lead to a uh, failure to maintain the rate of capitella reduction. Um, I certainly encourage uh, osteotomies of the proximal ulna um, as it is much more powerful in correcting the deformity. Um, diaphyseal osteotomies are possible as well, but, be since, but since it is far away from the site of deformity, you end up needing much more correction in a diaphyseal osteotomy than in the proximal ulnar osteotomy.